In the depth of winter, when the whole face of the earth was covered with snow and the waters covered with ice. Welcome to the Experimental Theater at the Conrad Priebus Music Center, the Department of Music, University of California, San Diego. Over the past two and a half weeks, we have been working here on a work that is co-commissioned by the University of California's Washington Center, the Mount Vernon Ladies Association, and the National Symphony Orchestra. My collaborators in this endeavor have been Ross Carr, Jaime Oliver, and Joseph Cusera. Behind me, you can see a 60% scale model of the way in which the Kennedy Center's primary hall will be set up for the performances of this work that will take place in October of 2013. The National Symphony Orchestra, conducted by its music director, Christoph Eschenbach. For the performances at the Kennedy Center, the stage will be outfitted as this space is. There will be three narrators on stage, one representing Washington as a teenager, one as a middle-aged activist, and one as a retiring president. The orchestra will be seated between the three large uh, screens that bracket the back of the stage uh, and on which Complementary imagery will be projected throughout the performance. The imagery coming from the Mount Vernon estate then reflecting the ways in which Washington himself probably experienced his precious world. So far from seeking the appointment, I have used every endeavor in my power to avoid it. I should enjoy more real happiness in one month with you at home then I have the most distant prospect of finding abroad if my stay were to be seven times seven years. I shall rely on that providence which has heretofore preserved and been bountiful to me as it has been a kind of destiny that has thrown me upon this service. I shall hope that my undertaking it is designed to answer some good purpose. I retain an unalterable affection for you, which neither time nor distance can change. It should be the highest ambition of every American to extend his views beyond himself and to bear in mind that his conduct will not only affect himself, his country, and his immediate posterity, but that its influence may stamp political happiness. There is a destiny. Or misery which has the sovereign control of our actions on ages yet unborn. I believe all things will come out right at last, but the people must feel before they will see. I see their situation, know their danger, without having it in my power to give them further relief.
The sound will come to the audience not only from uh, the orchestra, of course, primarily on stage, and the three live narrators, but also from computer processed elements recorded on the Mount Vernon estate, which will be uh, disseminated into the hall by an eight channel sound system. And well pointed, never can reach the most vulnerable part of me. The three screens, at first perhaps surprising, in fact relate to one of the crucial experiences in Washington's life. The cupola, which uh, he designed and which was built a rather late addition to the Mount Vernon estate. At one point in the text, he speaks of looking back over the ground that has been traversed from his rooftop and one imagines that that probably referred to the view from the cupola, which is a multi-sided structure with windows, faceted, separate panes. And at the end of the work, one will begin to understand that these various uh, shapes, the kind of pixelated structure of imagery that's presented on the three screens, in fact, is a kind of replication in an imaginary world of the panes in the cupola, out of which, from the top of Mount Vernon Estate, Washington could view the sunrise and the Potomac. I rejoice in a belief that intellectual light will spring up in the dark corners of the earth, that freedom of inquiry will produce liberality of conduct, that mankind will reverse the absurd position that the many were made for the few.